Hey guys, how's it going? It's Intanger here. I'm back on Factorio again, and I'm making a video today trying to talk about how uh, how to use IVTN, what it's for, uh, Intanger's vanilla train network. Uh, it's basically a train routing and management system geared towards grid type bases where you don't want to have stackers everywhere. Uh, there's not a whole lot of real estate in these narrow margins, the way I do my grid bases anyway. I like to have most of my grid available for you know, all the functionality I need for the factory, not a whole bunch of train infrastructure. So the trains, they stick to these narrow areas in the, in the, on the edges, and they park um, at the stations on the edges as well, and everything else is freed up for, um, you know, functionality, except for you do need a depot somewhere. Um, but yeah, so you don't need stackers anywhere. You basically just have this shared centralized depot as your sh as like a shared stacker. And you can have multiple of them. If you run out of space in one, you could just, you could put, you could take up a whole block of it with them. You could put them all over the place. Uh, you can do them however you want. They don't have to be necessarily nearby and they don't really have to worry about c coordinating very much with each other anymore either. Um, but yeah, the main goal is to avoid over-provisioning trains by, you don't want to send too many trains out to a, a location that uh, when they won't be able to do anything. And that's helped substantially with uh, some of the features they added near the end of 1.0 and especially now with 2.0 with things like train limits. Uh, that's made things a lot easier, but um, there, there's still, you know, there's still more functionality you, you need for like some basic, you know, getting things done type functionality with trains that's going to be included in this. Um, and now it also, also it also supports dedicated trains and flex trains. And uh, flex trains can pick up, like in 1.0 uh, of my IVTN, um, only, dedicated, uh, only dedicated trains were supported. But now on, um, on this version 2.0 plus, it'll also support flex trains, which will, uh, they'll notice if there's um, supply and demand stations out there for resources that aren't specifically assigned to them that aren't being handled, they'll run out and take care of it. So what are the main advantages of ITN? Um, as I said, there's no need for stackers. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space, really. You can kind of put a lot of stuff on the margins. It doesn't require any mods. Uh, it does work with a lot of mods, though. It, it will support most mods, I think, uh, no problem, actually, now. Uh, you don't even have to do any extra special setup anymore uh, because... Um, the only setup you need to do is parameterized. So yeah, you don't re doesn't need uh, doesn't need mods, but should support mods. No longer needs a big depot computer. I used to have a big depot computer on 1.0, but you no longer need that at all. The depots are super simplistic now, and um, they don't really need to worry about syncing with each other or anything like that. And uh, it should still work also without space age, but I haven't tested that. I think it'll work on any 2.0 version, even if you aren't using space age. But I'm not uh, not really sure about that. I haven't tried it. Uh, but yeah, now with parameterized blueprints, it's it's super easy to set everything up. I'm gonna and let's go ahead and get into that now. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing you're gonna want to do is have a base with some rails in it. And uh, I don't have a great base, and I, and mine's in survival mode, and I don't want to do you know I don't want to go creative on it. So I'm just gonna use the sandbox here. But yeah, you want to have some sort of rail system already set up with you know rails and intersections and stops and that sort of thing. And uh, what you, uh, if you don't have a good rail system of your own, you can get this one narrow tracks um, rail setup that I have. It's going to be available on the same place as my uh, as my um, the IVTN. Sorry about that. Anyway, so I laid some of this out. I keep forgetting that you can just grab the whole book. You can grab a whole book and then s um, tab through them with uh, I think Shift mouse wheel. All right. So some of these have already been offset, and some of them haven't. When you're working with grid snapped blueprints, you can uh, you can you can shift them around a little bit. I'll show you how in just a second. Let me plop a few of these down. I think one of them. Oh, I guess they're all aligned. Uh, so this is the one I have for my depot. I'm gonna plop that down. All right. If you do need to change the alignment, like you download this and you don't like the alignment, make sure you use Control. And arrow keys to move it. If you change the alignment with control, it will shift the entire grid for the blueprint. If you use shift instead, it will move your blueprint relative inside the grid, and then it won't rotate correctly anymore like this. See how it now it doesn't rotate any correctly anymore? But now it will. So make sure you use control, because if you use the other one, you get yourself into trouble. Um, and if you do get like, if you do start using shift on accident and you start misaligning everything super badly, uh, I, I recommend just re-downloading the, the blueprint. 
Um, but yeah, you need a, a rail system with some signal connections as well, actually. Now, you need circuit connections. Um, so I'm only using the red signal, but um, this one that I have available here has green and red. It, it, you know, it tries to take it all the way through your entire base. So anywhere you're laying rail, it'll carry these red and greens for you. Um, and yeah, so now we need IVTN. And I recommend um, trying to make sure you have the, the newest version. You can go to... Uh, um, the factorial forums. Oops, which window do I have open here? All right, here it is. Uh, so I've been posting it on factorial forums. Uh, you, there should be a link on the YouTube video you're watching now. And uh, I already had it open. Whoops, uh, I had too many windows open. But yeah, um, find my my thread on here, and it'll tell you what the latest version is. Right now it's 2.02, .02, and there are some major improvements on the point on the 2.02 version over the 2.01 so make sure to get the latest version if you don't already have it because it, it there's some major changes and the sooner you switch over the easier it'll be to switch because you you, you probably will have to replace your trains and stuff like that so um yeah get get both of these if you want the the, the rail stuff that's in this one but yeah get this one i'm going to copy that and then um you can use the import string paste it in here and it will uh, give you a whole book. I'm going to throw out this old one. Uh, I also used to post my blueprints on factorial prints, but it doesn't seem to be working anymore for me. I don't know why. I see other people are posting new things, but I cannot. So I'm just going to use the uh, factorial forums thread and go about it through there. All right, next step is setting up some depots, right? Uh, let's start with the main depot. This is where the, the trains will park when they're not in use. I, I changed uh, in the recent version I've changed it so there's only one shared depot it works for everything uh, it does have a couple of things that not every single type of train needs but um, it's just easier to have one type of depot and uh, and do it like that so this also needs to be connected to the uh, the network here so I'm gonna run I'm just gonna run an extra one of these guys and make sure you carry the red signal from the main network all the way to your line of poles and uh, those look connected now okay so that that takes care of that one it should be ready to roll you don't have to do any special setup on this anymore it's really handy on this version like um, on 1.1 1. 1, uh, 1.0 version you have to do all this oh, lots of extra setup you don't have to do any of that um, next thing we're going to do is, an, is another one of the shared station types the refueling station let's go ahead and put one of those down uh, trains will uh, require a place to get fuel uh, I think that they'll just sit there and complain if you don't give them some somewhere to get fuel. So make sure to do this, or they'll uh, they'll just sit there and complain. So I've got like a really basic one. You can change this to your liking to you know run belts to it or however you want to do it. But for now, it's just as long as fuel's getting on the train. I also pull fuel that I don't want on the train back off the train. So it it just makes sure that it's just got only the rocket fuel. All right, next let's place some trains. So. Uh, I've got three kind of trains that you can use. There's dedicated item trains. They'll only focus on one type of item, and they won't, they'll won't. they ignore everything else. But the cool thing about these is that they can go and pick up the, um, the types of items uh, even if they're not ready to deliver it yet, and they'll just have it on hand so that uh, they've, they're close by with the product ready to roll when um, the need arises. And they'll, as many of these as you have, they'll just fill up and um, have as much of it on hand just dedicated to, to taking care of it. Um, and then there's, uh, there's fluid trains. Um, fluid trains are just like the dedicated item trains but for fluids. They'll just handle, you know, they'll do the exact same thing but for fluids. So I'm going to plop one of those down. And they're, uh, they're going to go fuel up and then they should come back. And uh, lastly, and this is a really cool new feature with the 2.0 version, this wasn't really possible to implement before on Factorio Vanilla, uh, flex trains. The flex trains, they'll be able to get, uh, this is a flex item train, they'll be able to get any type of item that the network has a need for. So they'll notice where there's a need and a supply available, they'll go take care of it uh, unless a dedicated train beats them to it. All right, so th those are fueling up, and they're coming back here to, to park, and they're just going to wait there. All right, so that takes care of the trains. All right, next thing's next is we need something for the trains to actually do. <laughs> so let's give them some supplies to pick up, and we're going to do that with the supply station. I'm going to plop a couple of these down. And they actually have... Um, 
a requirement to be hooked up to the circuit network now. Um, the, the previous version, like the 1.0 version, always had to have that. But uh, I was trying to avoid having to use it on 2.0. But um, there's reasons why it, it ended up becoming necessary. It had to do with uh, the, the flex trains. If you're, if you're not going to use flex trains and you're only going to use dedicated trains, you don't have to connect them to the network. But if you are going to use uh, flex trains at all, you need to connect them to the network. I'm going to put a couple of these down. And uh, I'm just going to make them the same thing so we can test something later. So um, let's also pipe some supplies into these. Alright, so they'll be loading up, and uh, once they reach a certain threshold, they'll start, they'll start signaling to the network that they've got um, supplies. But the main way that they signal now is not necessarily over the wires anymore like they used to have to. Now they just signal by turning the station on. So now it's just turned on because we just hit the threshold. So the station, the station itself turns on, and the trains can detect that directly. And actually, my dedicated train has already gone and started taking care of it. Dedicated trains, again, they... Um, they can uh, pick up materials even if there's not anywhere to deliver it yet because they're dedicated to that resource type. All right, so next thing we want to do is set up a demand station. Demand stations, re you know, request from the network to get something delivered to them. So I'm going to put one right here, and it's going to ask for rocket fuel again. We're just going with rocket fuel. It's got small stack sizes. And I'm just going to put some of these on the end of that. Okay, so this is available. I mean, this is online now, and uh, immediately a train has showed up and started supplying it. This is our dedicated train again. It's it's on the ball. It'll, it'll almost always get to jump on the the flex trains because it, it, it basically has a head start, unless it's somehow busy. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and set up another one. I'm going to set up a second dedicated uh, item station right here for uh, rocket fuel again. And now that we have two... The flex train should spring into action, and there it goes. It's re it's recognized that there's additional need. It's not being handled, and it springs into action and goes and gets a load so that it can take care of it. All right, so so far so good. Let's set up some uh, fluid stations, and uh, those are right here. I've got a fluid supply and a fluid demand. one of these up and give it a bunch of gas and as soon as it goes on there here comes our, our train so it's running off to handle it we're gonna set up a fluid demand station thanks for watching I hope this was helpful to you uh, please like and possibly subscribe if you're into this kind of content uh, feel free to comment and share your experience with any of the issues you're you're running into if you're using it and ideally on YouTube um, I get notifications on YouTube but not I don't pay any attention to notifications on the factorial forum so if you want to reach if you want to reach me just uh, message in the comments all right have a good one see you next time bye